Thank you for that kind introduction and good morning to our learners from around the world. I'm gonna be talking today about lifelong learning and its action as an engine of economic development. Societies face challenges from grand to small. They're seeking social equity, public health, cultural enlightenment, and especially economic development. I'm gonna focus my comments today on economic development, but I think you'll understand that the points I talk about share uh, commonality with equity, health, and culture as well. Society has to do all this while it's with a growing population and a need not only to protect, but to restore the environment. We're past needing to protect the environment. We now need to restore the environment. And of course, we have to do this while we're recovering from a pandemic. These are large tasks for society, for governments and for individuals. We're taking these on at the Tsinghua Southeast Asia Center, Tsinghua C or TC, where we're building a new campus of Tsinghua focused on education, research, innovation, and academic cooperation. The campus is Indonesia, so we deal especially with Indonesia, the Southeast Asian region, and beyond. And this program, TC, will serve as an important vehicle for achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Let's see how we're gonna do this. Well, first we need to start with the goals. I trust you've seen these many times by now, the 17 uh, UN SDGs. We've organized them into three layers. The first layer is basically things that have to do with people, poverty, hunger, well-being and so forth. The second layer has to do with the ecology, uh, the climate, life, uh, responsible consumption in cities. And the third layer, you might consider partnerships, justice, and spirituality. So we have at TC adopted these strategic development goals as guidance for our goals as a university, but we've also added an interesting layer. These three layers coincide with Tri Hita Karana, which is a traditional way to happiness in this region of Indonesia, in Bali. Harmony with people, harmony with the ecosystem, and harmony with the spirit. So this SDGs taken together with this sense of harmony build us a culture and a strategy for taking on the, global, the needs of global society. How do you contribute as a student? That's really what I want to address today. I usually speak with university presidents and deans and such, but it's important to understand the role of a student in a university and the role of students in addressing these problems of society. You supply so much of the energy of a university. You're a source of boundless optimism. But most importantly, while at the university, you become a lifelong learner. You should metacognitively discover that you're learning different things in different ways. And from this basis, you should develop a sense of how to continue to learn in the future. Because learning never ends. Learning goes through your entire life. Uh, secondly, and most importantly, you'll act as a principal agent of knowledge exchange. When you leave the university once or several times, you take with you all of the knowledge of the university, all the knowledge you've acquired to bring it out into society. So you and society benefit from your role as a lifelong learner and as an agent of knowledge exchange. Let me talk to you a little bit about how universities work, or at least how I think universities work. If we start over on the right-hand side, these are the desirable outcomes, societal outcomes of economic, social, or cultural development with a consideration of sustainability. But the university doesn't actually create these outcomes. The university starts at the other end of the scale, where we say resources, what the university builds on. It's faculty, it's students, that's you its administrative facilities and funding. Building on these resources, the university runs three large uh, centers of effort. One on education, which, whose outcome is graduates, teaching students new knowledge and skills. One that, is, one that produces research results, or we call them discoveries, things that have been never known before or have been poorly explained. And the third, and very importantly for economic development, is that the university takes part in catalyzing innovation 
inventing things that never were. This is not only technology, it's medical procedures, business approaches, and so forth. It's the role, it's the creative role of the university in the arts and sciences, where uh, things that have never been are made or just. So these three uh, areas of activity, education, research, and catalyzing innovation are totally organized around the contribution of the students. And they produce knowledge exchange. They produce exchange of knowledge between the university's partners in the form of graduates, discoveries, and creations, which go to industry, enterprise, government, cultural institutions, nonprofits, and other universities. And this is where the action takes place. It's when the knowledge of the university is exchanged with the partners and contributes to society, the societal good, societal development occurs. So we have to get inside this university model to find out how you're going to help. This is a simple model of what I've just said. There's education, research, and catalyzing innovation inside the university. This, the knowledge outcomes of these activities, research, education, and catalyzing innovation, are exchanged with the partners. At the partners, innovation and entrepreneurship are accelerated, and this contributes to societal economic development. And when there's positive economic development, there is, in general, better health, better education, sounder governance, and so forth. So knowledge exchange is the key idea. It's your role as a university student to acquire knowledge and to carry it out of the university and apply it in society, in, in partners. Universities act as engines of economic development, and they help to accelerate this sort of innovation in industry and enterprise through knowledge exchange. Knowledge exchange is the two-way exchange of people and ideas with partners at the porous boundary. You're what's exchanged. I once had a friend at Harvard who said, the best, most effective knowledge exchange mechanism at Harvard is when parents come up and pick up their graduating students and drive away. The role of individuals, of students and professors, is invaluable in the exchange of knowledge, which leads to societal development. These activities that strengthen knowledge exchange can be built into effective practices. We're going to identify 11 effective practices of a university in education, research, and catalyzing innovation and enable their outcomes, graduates, discoveries, and creations. So here's the next step in our model of the university. We have three large domains of activity, education shown in the red, the upper left, research shown in blue, the upper right, and at the bottom, catalyzing innovation in green. So these are the activities. Education educates the mind, research that produces discoveries, catalyzing innovation creates creations. And these talented graduates, discoveries, and creations move across the boundary of the university, this porous boundary, in order to have effect on society. And you're most important in the education of talented, uh, the flux of talented graduates when you leave and go to interns, summer programs like this, when you're employed or when you become an entrepreneur. But you also have a role in research. You might participate in publications and discussions and joint projects and personnel exchanges. But research and education overlap. So these, this research knowledge migrates via the students to society. Likewise, catalyzing innovation produces creations which are captured in IP agreements, intellectual property, artifact exchange, startups, consulting, and so forth. But again, there's an overlap between catalyzing innovation and, and education. So these migrate to the education and out of the universities for the, for the talent of graduates. So you're the important link. The university students absorb the education, absorb the research, and absorb the results of catalyzing innovation and carry it with them outside of the university. The best way to move knowledge is to give it to people and move the people. And you are an important part in that flux. But what students do, what are you going to do to help with this? You're doing this, these things. And I'm working today on metacognition. I'm trying to get you to understand that you're these things and understand the importance. First, you become lifelong learners in what, what I'm going to describe soon as the 11 practices of the university. You act as agents of knowledge exchange in these three domains we just discussed, education, research, and innovation. 
So there are these two tasks that students need to execute in order to help contribute to societal development, become lifelong learners, and absorb information and be ready to pass it along and uh, act as knowledge exchange agents. So here are the 11 practices, and I'll touch on them all slightly here. When we start up in the upper left-hand corner, there's teaching uh, through ed curriculum, what it is that we seek to teach the students. And there's learning through pedagogy, learning to learn. But it's not just the knowledge that has always been there's learning of new and emerging thought. The researchers and innovators are producing ideas that should need to migrate towards the educational process. And likewise, the overlap between education and catalyzing innovation is preparing for innovation, learning how to be an innovator. After you learn how to become an innovator at a university, you can actually take first steps at actually at venturing. So you know how to take knowledge from the curriculum, to learn and, and from emerging thought to, to your skills in preparing for innovation in order to create ventures. If we start in the upper right with research, we seek to do impactful research at universities. It doesn't matter, really matter if it's curiosity driven or use inspired. What is important is that it's impactful. It will change the way in which society looks at the problem. We do research which is collaborative, where we work with people from our own disciplines or from other disciplines. And we take on problems in centers, which are uh, typical of, of real problems. We unapologetically in centers, research centers, take on the needs of society, as all of our colleagues around the world are doing now with the virus. There's something you observe at universities when you watch them, is that researchers make discoveries, but on a very small scale, and then tend to move on. We need these, these discoveries are not really ready for prime time. They're not really ready to take on a role in society. So we need to mature these creations and discoveries. And then we need to facilitate interaction and dialogue, uh, people in industry and government who can make use of these. And there at the very center is the student, student researcher, the student learner, student innovator who plays a role in all of these activities. So let me talk first about education, the most valuable contribution. You're the outcome of an effective education, talented graduates. And the objective of education is to develop the potential for students to lead fulfilling lives, contributing to society, and acting as agents of knowledge exchange and innovation. We need you to develop a deep working knowledge of disciplinary fundamentals and be infused with skills, approaches, and judgments that enable them to access both existing and new opportunities. So I'm gonna go quickly through these 11 uh, effective practices of the university to show how you can use these as a model of continuous learning, of lifelong learning. The first one is the curriculum. I challenge you to engage in the curriculum, in the courses, projects, and co-curricular experiences so that you'll graduate with talent, fundamentals, knowledge of fundamentals, and knowledge of skills. I challenge you to take part in active, experiential, and digital learning so that you graduate with deep understanding and self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is the idea that you're confident in your ability to apply what you've learned to new tasks in society. And deep understanding means that you can manipulate the knowledge in order to, that you have in order to take on new approaches and solve new problems. I challenge you to learn things that are quickly migrated across disciplinary boundaries and new types of emerging thought. Don't just study the old stuff at a university. Try yourself to study the new stuff at a university, the new ideas, the new experiments, the new theory, the new creations. This education and emerging thought is really important because this is the new stuff that you'll leave the university with and carry through the society. Preparing for innovation is an important part. In order to be a successful change agent in society, at a minimum, you have to understand about leadership, how to rally people around values and cause, management, how to make organizations run effectively and efficiently, and entrepreneurship, how to make new organizations. 
leadership, management, management, and entrepreneurship. I challenge you to study these things to become better prepared to be innovators. Now we go to the research. Again, four, uh, four models here. I challenge you to work while you're a student, an undergraduate or especially a graduate, on impactful fundamental research. You can pursue curiosity-driven research or use-inspired discoveries. I, and you'll develop new knowledge with the impact on scholarship and other scholars and on society. I challenge you to try and do collaborative research, stretch beyond the boundaries of your department or your laboratory or your professor and collaborate with internal and external scholars, discovering, making discoveries across disciplines and in new fields of thought. I challenge you to work on large, important problems. If I were a biologist, bi biomedic, I'd be in the thick of the solution to, so, to COVID at this point. Sometimes society presents problems that we just need to address and I need to do it at a large scale. This is empowered by centers of research, education, and innovation, which produce directly implemental, implementable and impactful solutions to the problems of society. And you can help do this. I challenge you to become a student researcher, a student innovator, and a student scholar understanding undergraduates, engaging undergraduates and postgraduate researchers and preparing research uh, agents and those who will exchange knowledge. Three more, it's coming up soon. Then there's a role that universities increasingly play of explicitly engaging with industry and other partners, industry, government, and people in civil society. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to take the discoveries we make and take the creations we make and mature them through the progressive process of invention, market analysis, and demonstrations. I challenge you to create these types of uh, innovations with higher technology and market readiness. This next one is one that's arguably hard for a student, but there are ways to do it. It's important to get an informal and formal di dialogue with people in industry and other partners. This will help uh, have more partners adapted by, more creations adopted by the partners because those at the university will understand what the partners need. How can you do this? You can work on industry sponsored and government sponsored projects. You can attend seminars. You can read about what the trends are in industry and government, all trying to prepare you to facilitate a dialogue and eventually agreements with partners outside the university. And finally, entrepreneurial venture. There's a role of creating real entrepreneurial processes within the university. New ventures and more experienced entrepreneurs are the result. Uh, the main goal here is not necessarily to make money, it's to prepare the university students and scholars in the process of entrepreneurial venture. Well, that's it. 11 practices that I challenge you to do, to learn the the fundamentals, to deeply learn the fundamentals and develop self-efficacy, to learn emerging thought and to prepare to be an innovator, to do impactful research with others in collaboration on large problems of scale involving students uh, as you go, to mature discoveries and creations, to facilitate dialogue, and to start real entrepreneurial endeavors within the university. So now if we go back to this model, I hope it makes a little more sense. Once again, on the right, here are the outcomes we desire. S economic, social, cultural development. On the left, we start with the resources, including students. The students participate in education, research, and catalyzing innovation. And they graduate and go to the partners in industry, enterprise, government, cultural institutions, and nonprofits. And there, the transformation of knowledge into goods and services takes place have economic, social, and cultural value. It's all part of a system, and students play this vital role in this system. Well, I've had the opportunity twice in my life to work on creating a new university around these ideas. One, the, a few years ago, I was invited to come to Moscow and help in the establishment of Skoltech, the Skolkova Institute of Science and Technology outside of Moscow. This is an artist's rendition of the eventual campus that we finished. 
assume. Uh, here, the innovation and the design of the university was a very close linkage between science and innovation. So students come interested in science, students come to Skoltech interested in innovation, and they work together to produce scientific innovation and engineering innovation. Then through the generosity of uh, some partners, I was invited to come and be the founding provost of the Kurakura Bali campus of the United University program in Indonesia. So what's this is about the best job in the world, right? Go to Bali and become the founding leader of a new university dedicated towards happiness and sustainability combined with cities, finance, and entrepreneurship. Happiness is, an, is another way of saying overall social well-being, but happiness is actually at an individual level. P individuals are happy. Society has well-being. But what's really attracted me to Kurokura and the Bali campus is the idea of designing institutions around sustainability. How would you design a university? How would you design your education in order to uh, build up a, a theme of sustainability, to make a sustainable island, a sustainable country, a sustainable planet? This is the great challenge of your generation. And this is the challenge that Kurokura Bali, the United University Creative Campus, and the Tsinghua SEA are dedicated to. Please consider coming and joining us uh, as we explore how to build happy and sustainable cities, uh, sustainable financing, that is to say, using the financial instruments in order to stress finance, uh, in order to stress uh, sustainability, and finally, become an entrepreneur and make the world more sustainable. So here's my challenge to you, become an agent of knowledge exchange and become a lifelong